We all remember the show Animaniacs. Back in the 90s, you'd come home from school and sit on the couch and enjoy it. Life was simple then, and so were we. But a lot of people don't know exactly what that show was about. There were ideas, sure, but the truth is, there's only one person who knows. And that is the creator. Steven Spielberg. I say this because I worked for the Spielberg estate as an intern briefly in the mid-90s. Steven was an eccentric man, to say the least. Sometimes you could say something seemingly innocuous, and his disposition would turn on a dime. The idea behind the show is that there are three children trapped in a water tower. That was how he originally pitched it to Warner Brothers. It seems a little odd to think about that. That's nothing like a comedy show, but there's a pilot episode of the show that only about five or six people have seen. I know this because I'm one of the few people who has seen it, and there were only three promotional copies released. Two were destroyed in fear that if it actually hit television, it would destroy Steven Spielberg and co-creator Tom Ruger's careers in the process, because it was far too disturbing for daytime kids' programming. Rumor has it Spielberg still keeps the copy in his private office in Los Angeles, California. If you ever ask him about it, he'll abruptly change the subject and tell you never to mention it again. I suppose I should confide in you that I actually have the other remaining copy of the tape. That's right, I didn't destroy it. I told him I smashed it with a mallet, but in reality it's sitting in my garage. I may release it one of these days, but... It'll have to be a few years after Spielberg has passed on, as he knows who I am, and I don't want to get sued or lose my animation career. Oh, the episode... The episode starts as normal. You see the three rambunctious creatures singing the intro song. It's time for Animaniacs. We are zany to the max. So just sit back and relax. You'll laugh till you collapse. We're animaniacs. What's weird is that the voice actors, who I personally never met because we sent the audio out to a third-party studio, sound really dismal in the pilot episode. There's also the lyric about pay-for-play contracts that was never meant to be funny. Each of the cast members of the show was in a non-binding legal contract that could be terminated at any time because Mr. Spielberg frequently insisted on these forms of contracts. Oh, I remember. I, I tried talking him out of that lyric because it was concerning, but he insisted on it. Multiple times. There is a part in the song where they sing animany, totally insaney, and something would go in there that was new every week. Well, here it just sounded like hearts are grainy, and you see some picture of a dead chicken or something. It, it was really creepy, and I don't understand the humor. The whole show tightened up its humor when it was finally released, because this was never meant to be a comedy. The story behind the original show was supposed to be that the characters were locked away in the water tower until they escaped. Now, destined to roam the lot and drive the Warner Brothers studio employees mad. This wasn't a joke. There really is a Warner Brothers water tower on the Warner Brothers lot, but... It doesn't produce water. They have a separate main line for their liquid transfers, and this is a prop. No one has ever actually been inside the water tower except a few close confidants of the studio executives. Rumors include the idea that it houses piles of fake money, leftover props from various Warner Brothers films, and some say that you can even hear the sound of something moving in there, but it's not water. I've been told from employees that it sounds like a rustling, a grinding, or as though some animal is trapped inside the water tower. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you that before I continue, because 
Otherwise, you won't understand the rest of what I'm about to tell you. You hear an announcer at the start of the tape, and he says, Here at the Warner Brothers studio, the owners toil endlessly to come up with new ideas, presenting three new characters, Yakko, Wacko, and Death. Believe it or not, Dot's name was originally Death. Well, not spelled the same way as the Death you know, it was Death. They also had the last name, Death, as well. So the characters' names were Yakko Death, Wacko Death, and Death Death. They also immediately started talking about being deaf. See, the, the thing about the original show was that Stephen wanted three characters to represent the three wise monkeys. If you don't know what that is, it comes from the phrase, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. The screener of this originally elicited audible gasps from the small test room of participants. Wacko was shown having no eyes, but really desecrated sockets with damaged capillaries. Yakko had no ears, but you could see small places where they were severed down in ear holes, like where the space should be. The artist had rendered the ear to be highly realistic, to the point that you could see small amounts of detail inside the inner canal, and Dot, or Death, the female, had no mouth. Oh, not just no mouth, but a missing jaw, which was rendered to show the space where the mouth bone connected. She would instead, and I'm not kidding you, hold her jaw to her face and move it up and down any time she wanted to speak. So good to see you today, Dot said, but the hand holding the jaw moved it up and down in a downright sickening fashion. At this point, I remember in great detail, two people left the lot and drove home, fearing that they would get fired by Mr. Spielberg if they spoke out. The narrator continued, But the three characters were too grisly and disturbing, so they were locked away into the Warner Brothers' Trace Water Tower. This is probably what you've seen in the revised intro, which had a more comedic bent to it. Most of the jokes in the pilot were relating to each character's grisly deformity. Wacko would stumble around blind, occasionally falling on sharp objects or getting locked in a closet and trying to be let out. Yakko would just keep saying what and struggle to listen, feeling his own ear holes, trying to figure out why there is no sound. The announcer just says something really, really weird near the end. And the worst part is, they don't even know they're dead, it continued. Three lost children left to wander the Warner Brothers lot restlessly, looking for a vessel to repair their damaged organs. The idea behind the show was that the three characters would torment and haunt people on the lot as security constantly tried to lock them up. At the end of every episode, and I'm not kidding, they would be killed again. The idea, Stephen said, was to kill them every episode and have them come back not knowing how they died. At the end of this episode, they're stumbling around, mumbling, trying to claw their own faces off before the disheveled and irritated security guard catches them in a net and stuffs them back into the water tower. Truly a wheel of mortality, one might say. Anyway, the ending is the most disturbing of all. You just hear them crying like human cries, but sometimes animal, begging to be let out of the water tower as it's set on fire. You hear it burning and one of them yelling that he or she isn't plastic. She's Yakko Death or Wacko Death, Death Death, and all things are death, as things are all death. This continues for a good three minutes of constant b burning and screaming. I remember one of them saying it was being boiled alive. Come to think of it, I remember a joke from earlier in the tape about turning the water tower temperature up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. 
that's hot enough to melt human skin. Steven Spielberg and the rest of the writers never talked about it. To this day, nobody knows what's actually inside the Warner Brothers Tower. Some have suggested that they keep these screeners in there, not as jokes, but rather to show deference and respect to their art. I do know that security is very tight around that part of the lot, and if you get too close to the tower, you'll hear those noises. They're keeping someone or something in there, I, I just know it, but I can never get close enough to find out, and since I'm one of the few people with the clearance to look, I just might one of these days. Oh, it might just be a rumor or a terrible, terrible joke, but I can tell you that there are some very not funny things that go on there, and that's why they have us sign non-disclosure agreements when we work for the big W. I've decided to go tonight while everyone is asleep. I will find out what is happening inside that tower. If you hear from her, name redacted, tell my wife I love her. I was never a good father or husband, but I, I think that this one last redeeming act could save me. I might not make it out of this alive, but only the truth can set the blinding power of my human spirit ablaze free. I'm going to do it. I'm going to break into the fucking water tower. If you've ever seen Spider-Man, you know at the end when he wins. That's me. I am Spider-Man. You can contact me. Contact me at author name redacted if you wish to know more. Remember, this is for your eyes and ears only. If anyone finds out about this, my career is ruined. If you don't hear from me within 30 days, destroy this document because I am most likely dead.